My boy Pageant fans, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey Adam G. So let's continue talking about Miss Cosmo Paren, given it has come out with back-to-back -back events the other day featuring the national competition and the fashion show. Nakakaingit talaga guys, panoorin yung glossiness and HD quality of their broadcast online for both shows. The drone shots, display of culture and artistry on both shows can never be warranted. As in, ramdam na ramdam mo talaga yung culture ng Vietnam. And I'm also pleased at the level of uniqueness of the backdrop of the fashion show. Wow. Kaya pala gawin against the backdrop of nature. And they did it somewhere showcasing a beautiful outdoor landscape by a river or lake. So it was really pleasing to look at. The Vietnamese really knows how to put a stunning production and all the ladies were truly inspired by it. Rain or shine. So here, and so here are my favorite turns during both rounds combined. So I've got 10 ladies on my list and here they are. Number 10 on my list is Rajashri Dawara from India. I truly enjoyed watching India's national costume performance here because it felt like I was taking a peek or a semblance of her beautiful culture here. The way she walked with her back at first to showcase a beautiful reveal of her national costume depicting of a bride is so so stunning to see. Because the skirt, look at it, was shaped like a barrel with, a be with beautiful touches of gold and silver embroidery with intricate prints of lotus, orchids, diba? and similar items in this cultural dress. So I thoroughly enjoyed it, especially with her hand movements showing her dainty moves. So I don't know, is this how the Indians also dress for their wedding occasions? Because it really captured my attention as it seems to be an out-of-box design for a wedding dress. So kudos to the designer Roberto Naorem for this beautiful national costume and kudos to, to the lady as well for looking amazing during her turn at the fashion show with her multicolored fringe dress. Ang ganda. And now we go to my ninth spot and I'm giving it to Saranya Naidu from Malaysia. What an elaborate gold costume this lady has for this segment of the competition. Her rendition of this beautiful attraction of her town, how do you pronounce this? Negeri Sembilan in her country was beautifully made with that huge buffalo buffalo horned headdress and huge backdrop that she was wearing. She really looked every inch a royalty here in this gown or in this ensemble with that headdress capturing the beauty of her face. And as you watch it, as you watch her turn here, it wasn't really overwhelming her face. So that's why I really, really appreciate her beauty, beauty here. So it's my first time to notice Miss Malaysia in this year's competition. And now we go to my eighth spot and I'm giving it to Zaren Loyo from Venezuela. Finally, a Venezuela in my list in this year's competition. I actually feel this lady has just been blending in the competition, but I am so glad she pulled in a great tribal performance depicting the movement of a guardian of the comparsa, where she looked fierce and imposing on stage. And I like it, because she showed so much character here. Her fangs, I feel like, or oomph as a Venezuelan candidate here. Maybe it helps that she also put her hair in a bun, which made me appreciate the beauty of her face because it feels like she just looks okay with her hair down all the time. Although the execution of, the natco, of her natcos here was something that we have seen from before, I still appreciate her level of showmanship and styling here. Her hair bun really worked here, just like how she wore it again just like how she wore this hair bun again during the fashion show. Lumilitaw talaga yung ganda niya. So I hope she gets to, you know, I know it might sound too boring if she keeps wearing this hair bun for the remaining activities of the competition, especially during the all-important prelims and finals. But this is, this kind of hairstyle is really working for Venezuela. And now we go to my seventh spot and I'm giving it to Romy Lazaro or Lazano from Peru. I think this lady will place high in this year's competition because I have been noticing her a lot since the start of this year's inaugural competition. Rami, in this segment of the competition, looked like a pink carnival queen in her national costume inspired by an exotic flower in her country. And you can see that she was truly enjoying the whole time there on the show with her display of dances, smile, I love her smile, 
and lots of turns or twirls on stage. And I'm feeling her energy just by watching her on my smartphone. You know, she is just so contagious here, similar to how she captivated me during her turn at the fashion show the day after. That sheer net put on really matched the black fur coat that she was wearing, plus the boots made her look like a mafia boss lady. So if I were a lady watching this, I would have loved to snatch her outfit. So, so boss lady feels. And now we go to my sixth spot and I'm giving it to Brittany Marroquin from Honduras. She is the Latina who caught my attention the most during the National Costume Show and I don't know if it had something to do with her tribute to the Mayan civilization and I love anything about history. Or is it how she just thoroughly enjoyed performing up there? Because it's really a beautiful combination of performance, performance and history. The yellow, red, and green colors really added more to the eye-catching appeal or vibe of this costume. And she really worked it like how she also modeled her white dress the day after during the fashion show. And now we go to my top five and number five on my list here is Bui Suan Han from Vietnam. Finally, I am noticing this year's host delegate in this competition, but I really have to give it to her. She really gave us a show with her national costume display here. Her national costume is inspired by the mouse wedding painting of a folklore back in her country. Recognized, apparently recognized as a UNESCO world for its cultural impact and heritage. And so it's really an elaborate costume with a huge backdrop depicting the painting. But when she finally detached it from herself, from it, that's where she finally gave us a show by employing fireworks from her red umbrella. And the crowd really loved it. And thank goodness she had the fireworks display in her presentation because it would have been ordinary otherwise, in my opinion. So she really utilized her host candidacy to her advantage by wowing the crowd, by wowing us. But what makes me appreciate Miss Vietnam's performance here as a viewer is that it was my first time to see her smile like this because most of the time, she's always fierce. She's always fierce looking, like how she was again at the fashion show the next day. And one thing about this lady is that she always has a killer wardrobe and she seems to love the black collar or anything dark. So it really contributes to the vibe that she has been projecting, especially with the dark lipstick all the time. So she's really definitely a fashionista. And seeing her come out, come out in a lighter shade of colors when it comes to doing her makeup uh, in, in the National Costume Show really stunned me. So that's why I'm putting, her, I'm putting her so high in my list. And now we go to my fourth spot and I'm giving it to Frankie Russell from New Zealand. No surprise. Face card never declines. The level of consistency this lady displays when it comes to showing facials and smiles while performing on stage is really something which can really mesmerize us and boost her stock as a, can as a candidate. And I'm really amazed at how Frankie has managed to capture our attention just by showcasing the beauty of her face. And since meeting her earlier this year, it seems that based on my observation, she always loves to smile and display that fierce face while emoting in front of the camera. And I don't know if it has something to do with her work as an actress that she always has to give a show or to show character on stage. But it's clearly working. It's benefiting her in this year's competition. Her national costume for one here looked like she was coming out performing for a Victoria's Secret Angel show with those wings, bejeweled hair, and soft curls. Wow. Especially when the cameras, you know, were giving her those close-up shots. Uh, you will really be enchanted by her beauty. But sa totoo lang, guys, it's not her level of beauty that really caught my attention here. But it's really the statement that she made, which was literally written at the back skirt of her costume, which says, I am worthy. That, yun nga, no matter how life throws her stones, she will always be confident and un unapologetic of who she is. And I like that. Kasi ramdam na ramdam mo talaga yung hugot at gigil ni Frankie to impress us. So it's really working. Yun nga lang guys, her costume is something that we have seen from before. 
Pero yung ganda at hugot niya ang nagdadala talaga dito. So hopefully the Vietnamese do also appreciate her showmanship here. And I think napapansin din siya ng mga Vietnamese because she really had the honor, napansin niyo, had the honor of opening the prestigious fashion show event the next day. I think this is really a sign that the Vietnamese are recognizing her level of beauty because the show opener has, you know, as a show opener, you really have to set the tone or direction of the show. And frankly, worth it. Kahit nakatakip pa siya na sa lakot at the start, her high caliber facial beauty just couldn't be ignored. And when she finally removed it, uh, her beauty is to really die for talaga. And now we go to my top three. And number three on my list here is, no surprise again, Atisa Manalo from the Philippines. Up until now, I still couldn't get over Atisa's performance during the national costume competition. It was really magical, and I don't know if it really helped that her national costume was inspired by Jezebel, so all the more I could really feel some sort of magic while she was performing on stage. Now she just looked enchanting in this orange ensemble resembling the color of Jezebel's tail. Okay, alam ko, sina- gusto niyo sabihin na, you know, it's something that we've seen from before, di ba? Kasi nga, similar aesthetic, but she still work it. And a big reason, I think, of this stunning performance is that Atisa's charm was turned on 100% here for this occasion. She was smising, she was emoting with her facials every single turn, and I am loving it. And I don't know if part of the reason why I am loving every bit of her turn here is how she was tagged perfectly from head to toe. For one, her hair extensions here, I love how it was really glued to her real hair. Napansin nyo, while her real long hair was complementing her hair beautifully. Hindi nagmumukhang malaki yung mukha niya dito. Kasi halos nakadikit na yung buhok niya dito. So ang galing talaga. And watching her here, it really felt like her glow came back. Which was severely missing during the Miss Universe Philippines Finals a few months ago. Now she was just, I feel like she was just letting loose and thinking of Marian Rivera's character here. And so she was feeling like a goddess. Tapos plus point pa that this Jezebel costume was well researched pala given how she is trying to cater to the fondness of the Vietnamese for our iconic fictional heroine given how GMA soaps like Jezebel and other Pinoy teleseries have been a huge hit in Vietnam before. So Atisa really knows how to please the crowd talaga. Dinataan talang na lang talaga niya tayo sa charm and showmanship niya dito. However, to na nga. Much as I am raving about her performance here, I feel she went completely, completely the opposite during her third at the fashion show the next day. And for some reason, the charm she displayed during the Natcos show was suddenly missing again. And I don't know what she must be feeling then, but I feel she was really looking stiff while modeling this Audi dress by a famous Vietnamese designer, which is also contributing to the problem here because it was ill-fitting and so I wish she was made to wear another gown for this event but beyond that I just hope that Atisa could maintain her level of consistency every time she comes out on stage hence that's why I'm only ranking her third here on my list and now we go to my runner-up of this list and I'm giving it to Ketut Permata Julia Street from Indonesia oh my gosh guys I am so captivated with this lady's smile this is the first thing talaga that I noticed about Tata the moment she came out in this beautiful national costume inspired by the Saraswati goddess. You know, I was sa totoo lang, I was really expecting a fierce turn from her given how ladies have been showing their fierce side to show character while modeling their costumes on stage. But I realized maybe this Saraswati goddess costume or figure is associated with stream or river or any body of water. So the brief was for her to look so soft and dainty while performing. And I really like it so much because she showed so much relatability here. I am falling in love with her right now. Her transformation has been outstanding since her introduction here in Miss Cosmo. And then the day after, she was still consistent with her confidence level in this red outfit that she wore during the show. And I honestly think this girl is really showcasing her range in terms of versatility. Now, she easily nails the brief whether in that cause or in fashion show. She can be sweet in one occasion and fierce the next day. So I'm loving it. 
I am feeling Janine to go on vibes from her right now. And finally, we go to my top pick of this list, and I'm giving it to you. Likena In from Cambodia, hands down. My favorite during the National Costume Show. This lady was so much in character in this Black Onyx inspired national costume, displaying her intensity and strong stage presence. And honestly, it felt like she was maleficent here when she came out with this national costume number on stage. Now, she was just evoking so much drama on stage, given the intricate and elaborate design of her costume. And I'm really stunned. And even the smoke effect here that she had here jive well with the same effect being implemented on stage. So everything was working together for her in this presentation. There was nothing, there is nothing to nitpick or fault about her presentation. That's why she's my number one here on my list. And then the, the next day, she followed up with a confident turn yet again in this white dress during the fashion show. And I'm, so I'm really, really stunned. I just hope this lady has stellar communication skills to really make a huge impact in the competition. So there you go, guys. What do you think about my list? As you can see, the Asians lorded over my list, and I get why. Their costumes are truly a reflection of their respective beautiful cultures, and I totally enjoyed watching it. Actually, there were other costumes that also stunned me, like Guyana's, South Africa's, Canada. So, what do you think? Is my list the same as yours? Well, feel free to share your opinion down below so I can see all your feedback as well. All right, guys, until my next video. Bye!